right, slot car fans, welcome back to Hobbit Racing. Today, we're talking racer sideways. Group five, the launch of Beta Monte Carlo. Well, at least one of them. For those that follow along, I got two for Christmas. Why not get one when you can get both of the 1980 entries in Le Mans? Now, flat out admission, neither one of these cars finished the race nor the 51 in red, nor the 52 in blue that we'll have a, a separate feature on. Uh, but nonetheless, just the, the Beta Monte Carlo is just one of those cars to me that screams road car to race car. Um, a lot of those, you know, group two, like, you know, just then the, the, there was the under two liter, then there was the over two liter group fives. And just, I don't know the greatest history about it, but there's a lot of information out there on the internet. I was I was five, I was six. <laughs> My heyday that I grew up with was Group C, but I still hold a, a Group 5 of cars and spot, slot car world especially, still hold a place for me. It's a class that, uh, you know, we have a lot of fun with. I uh, love the fender flares, love all those things. So I got this red one right here, one of the two, again, the Lamont entries from 1980. And um, we're going we're gonna to unbox this. Sure, it's already unboxed in front of you here, but we're going to see what happens when I took it out from the cellophane, and we're going to take it through the paces of an initial review. And these Group 5 cars tune up so nicely, we're probably going to do both of them. Uh, you know, maybe I'll do one slightly different than the other, maybe different configuration of weight, maybe different configuration of, you know, either angle winder versus side winder, something to that variety. Uh, but um, just such fun cars and slotted parts, you know, slotted components mostly, but you've got sideways producing the car. So it's their tampo. It's their, you know, trademarked work. Uh, just, it's a great combination. So let's get to it. All right. So let's dive in here. Let's, let's dive into the purest nature here, right? Let's take a look at some slot cars and let's, oh, I don't know. We can unwrap them from the cellophane. Both of these cars are going to get NSR baby Kings. We love the 17,000 RPMs. More specifically, we love the 245 grams per centimeter of torque. This motor, depending on how you gear it, and based on the amount of torque that you get from the uh, just sheer takeoff power, if you know you want to use that expression, um, I could make an NSR GT or a group five, I can make one of those cars run just as fast as a slot at 23,000 RPM motor. There is a real reason why we do that. And that's it. So what should we do? The red pill or the blue pill? Uh, I just love these Beta Monte Carlos. I don't think there's any rhyme or reason as far as which one to do. Um, Neither car finished, <laughs> right? You're looking at the two entries for Le Mans in 1980. Um, I think one of the cars that maybe was uh, repainted with a different number, or maybe it was an altogether different car, one brand's hatch. Uh, another one did a, did a, had a nice successful run. Maybe I think it was, um, oh gosh, I think it was maybe the thousand meters or somewhere, uh, kilometers, thousand meters, I'll be all right. You wanna go a thousand meters? That'd be a quick race for a car, um, a thousand kilometers, uh, but neither one of these cars did. But again, there's still, you know, history here to be had and um, they're just beautiful, beautiful cars. So exciting here for me, obviously. Love taking the cellophane off. Interesting to note, by the way, I don't know when the two liveries were produced by Sideways. Can we love our Sideways cars, right? We get our slotted parts and our Sideways liveries from the tampo is coming from sideways this car has another turtle shell on top of it holding the car in place as you can see right there as i get the ring light out of the way this car has a half shell in the back of it holding it steady pretty interesting so we'll take you through some of the components on this car i expect to find the same components on the sister car from the mons in 1980 but nonetheless let's get our thumbnail in here and take a look. Pretty standard jewel box from Sideways. It looks like a slotted jewel box to me. This, of course, is the number 51, as it shows you right there. S 
W62 is their code for their make and model at Sideways. And again, we got the old, uh, you know, there's so many different places that are going to, you know, you've got a couple different varieties of this that you can get from Slot It when you undo it, when you unpack a car. This is, um, this is an interesting one. <laughs> it's, it's an interesting one, let's just say that. So let's set that aside. But again, all for the protection of the car. Um, gosh, I love these cars. Again, they just, the Group 5 cars, the Group 2, Group 5, and however they continue to classify the groups, you know, sure looks like a GT car to me, right? But at the end of the day, um, it just it just really wasn't. I mean, the Lancia lineup, is probably more famous for rally racing that we're familiar with, the Stratos. But make no mistake, they went full on with their efforts. And just the details here are beautiful from sideways. I don't know how long these pieces right here are gonna last, but that's very legitimate if I can get that up to the camera and maybe hold it at a sideways angle. See what I did there? Sideways angle. Um, where you can see the, I guess we'll call it, it's not a splitter. Shoot, it's not even a front diffuser. It was the aero package, and you can just barely see those guys on there. Hopefully they'll last. I don't think they still exist on my existing Beta Monte Carlo that I have tuned a long time ago. Uh, but it's just, I love it, man. It reminds me of my mother's Datsun. I think my mom had a... Yeah, I was about to say it. My mother had a 210. My mother had a 210 hatchback. And if you threw some fender flares and a spoiler on that, man, I'll bet you I could do some damage with that car. And so just really, really nice work here from sideways with the Tampo. It's just beautiful stuff. I had to rebuild the back of this on my number 23 livery. But this is just beautiful stuff out of the box here. Mm. Well, of course, a lot of spare parts, some desiccant gel. Okay. okay, get out of the way here. There we go. One click. There we go. One click. All right. Mm. That's fun. That's going to be pretty. Of course, a lot of components in here short of the idea that this motor pod is more proprietary to uh, Racer, Racer Sideways. So otherwise you have slotted components that we're familiar with. You do get the adjustable front axle height. We'll be happy to take advantage of that. You've probably got a snap-in slotted guide here, I'm assuming. Can't see my eyeballs through that all the way, but we'll be putting a slotting plus guide on here and we'll be putting quick slicks on the back. The interesting thing here is um, I may maintain that gear ratio. I believe that comes 11.28. 11.28 is really nice for this car with a Baby King. So um, you, can, you can really gear up the Baby Kings because of the torque. And if you can get really solid, solid gear lash and solid uh, weight transfer in the back and get the cars heavy enough, you can really get them to take off at that high gear ratio. Very nice, very nice detail here on the livery itself. We'll get a nice close up here for everybody on the livery. Again, there's just something for me about the, the Le Mans cars. I know you can just say, well, that's you know, super easy to find all the Le Mans cars. Listen, I don't believe either one of these cars finished the race. So there is the prestige of the cars being for Le Mans, but it's not like I just went out and bought every Le Mans race winning livery that I could find. So again, the detail, if I could get it out of the light. Yeah, real nice, real nice. And our driver is uh, in the uh, American driver's seat. <laughs> so we will uh, take the lid off.
Okay, body posts disconnected. Do have some, some nice screws here. Instant body float can be achieved. I probably won't be using the washers that were included, but uh, I'll stick with those body post screws probably. If not, they'll be replaced with uh, either slotted or NSR screws that do not have threads on the shoulders. So let's see what's going on in here. Well, we could take a look at the underside of the body first. So, um, somewhat of a lightweight interior, you could consider that. It's certainly, you know, uh, considered that. The fact that it doesn't have the body and this doesn't dip down very far right here. So, definitely you can see the profile would be easily considered a lightweight interior. I still love the muffler work and the end here of the motor. Remember, in original state, um, I can't remember whether the launch of Beta Monte Carlos originally had the motor here, but then... When they modified this car for uh, Group 5, the motor sat right behind the driver right here. So you've got everything connected in the back, including the muffler and everything exiting right there. And so that's really nice work from sideways right there. Just these bodies hold up too, I'll say this much. You know, no matter how long ago this body might have been Tampo manufactured, uh, short of this, short of the expectation again of these pieces right here to hang on, over the long haul, my uh, my number 23 has taken quite the beating over the course of time. So let's to get a peek here. Now, this is their pretty standard uh, <clears throat> angle winder configuration. So you've got their idea, their take on motor pod float. You've actually got a three-part connection. You've got kind of a T-bar going on here where, you know, I would never advise, although I can't say because I've never tried it, but... At face value, I wouldn't advise loosening those screws. I would advise loosening that screw and loosening these two screws to create your float. Now, I think I might have turned my other car into a sidewinder configuration. Maybe I'll give this a shot in the angle winder configuration. Uh, I do know one thing though, is I have quite a bit of weight and I'll probably apply the same principles and put quite the bit of weight in this car. Therefore, I will likely remove this magnet probably clean up this whole area so i can put more weight i might check the weight of the magnet and just see if it'll give me any advantage definitely be taking advantage of the side spots here to put weight in here uh, possibly probably even putting some weight up in the gooseneck area right here so we do have the snapping guide um, these are plastic wheels here and these are i believe 15 by eights in the back. So um, we'll get ourselves some axle spacers. We'll create some good movement for our front axle. We'll adjust our ride height eventually so that we can get that seated where we want it to be. We've got the opportunity. Well, what do you know? That'll probably be the one and only time this car hits the floor since I've never had a car hit the floor on the track or from the track. Anyway, no harm, no foul, we're back. Uh, so, uh, yep, we'll, we'll take full advantage. Um, might replace these motor wires. They've probably been in here a very long time. Um, and interestingly enough, we've got this, um, you know, we've got this detailed motor mount that is going to keep your long can motor in place. And I've got a long can motor coming in here. Um, however, that's a lot of that's a lot of stuff going on right there to hold that long can motor in place. I'd, I'd much prefer a mount that allows me to put motor screws horizontally into the cap of the motor. Uh, but, you know, we'll see. Again, this is kind of new territory for me as far as the launch of car because when I got my number 23 livery, that car had already been taken to the nth degree and messed with and I basically broke it down and started over again. Um, so this is from scratch for me here. Um, we've got brass bushings in the back. Don't necessarily consider them racing bushings. Um, but along with that, uh, we do have, as you'll notice right here, we do have a stop collar. So that's obviously necessary. The stop collar uh, with a uh, angle winder and you've got extra room over here. The stop collar is definitely necessary. So um, we will be, ooh, the gear lash, the gear lash catches right 
<laughs> right there. We won't concern ourselves with that other than making sure that if we want to stay with this 28 tooth that it's not that and that it might be something going on with the brass pinion. So one or the other is likely to be replaced even if I thought that I was going to use those out of the box and simply swap the motor. So, you know, always check things like that. I mean, look at now I'm actually spinning the, look at that. I'm spinning the rear wheel. Watch, I can probably take this right off. It's probably not even all the way on, of course. Right. That's how much gear lash is being interrupted. This wheel is already loose and I can take it right off, but it's because the gear lash is getting stuck right there. So out of the box, you know, to maybe the average user who is going to take this car out of the box and put it on their track uh, because they're less concerned about the detailed tuning of the car. You've still got to take a look at the car, right? I mean, look, I just, if I could take a wheel directly off the car, that's obviously not going to be a good thing, even for your average user. And then this right here, that's not going to help you every time you're going to run into that. So, uh, but, a, but a very nice, clean setup from sideways. They've got some uh, nice things to take advantage of where you can get your motor wires out of the way, get them through here so you can get some good action with your guide. Uh, much of that will be um, maintained when I configure the car. I like to keep my motor wire wires clean and keep them out of the way. But like I said, Baby King, Quick Slick CB34s or CB35Fs will go back here. We may super glue these bushings in place, we may not. We may keep that stop collar. I've got some other ones, but we'll certainly make sure we get some bushings. In, oh, some bushings. I'll be all right. We'll make sure we get some axle spacers in between there and get some nice, uh, some nice action going on in the back. Same thing up front. We'll get some axle spacers up front. These are obviously just, I don't want to say obviously, but these are just um, plastic, so you should be able to pull these wheels when needed and uh, separate them. And we'll put some um, NSR. 5201 zero grip tires on the front of them or maybe I'll coat these for the time being if I don't have any there's still way too much grip in those for my liking so yeah that's pretty much an overview I expect the other one to be the same way um, put some specs up here on the screen for this car and uh, see the real deal see the real version as well take you back to 1980 when it comes to looking at the real version of this car And uh, we'll definitely, uh, we'll do a tuning video for sure. Sideways car, I haven't done a tuning video, so absolutely. But there's a quick peek. It's uh, been, oh gosh, <laughs> quite a while since Christmas. These were Christmas presents, but one step at a time. We had the Mercedes, we had the R18, the Ninko R18, we had the Revo Slot Mercedes. Both came out fantastic. The uh, Ninko R18, the Audi came out exceptionally well. Uh, and now it's time to... Uh, now it's time to get into a tune here with both of these um, Beta Monte Carlos. If, uh, if I have the ability, if I have all of the parts needed, I will try and tune them side by side. Or maybe, maybe, depending on, uh, you know, give me some comments, give me some feedback if you're interested in this. Uh, maybe I'll tune this one as a side winder and the other one as an angle winder or maybe I'll keep this one angle winder since I said I was going to and I like the red a little bit more than the blue uh, I don't know just attracted to the red and maybe I'll turn the blue into a side winder I'm pretty sure I have a side winder slotted pod somewhere and we can compare the differences and see where we go from there well thanks for taking a look at the unboxing uh, here of the Number 51, Racer Sideways, launch a Beta Monte Carlo, the Le Mans entry, one of the two Le Mans entries from 1980. Coming right at you there on screen, and we will pick up with a tune on this car, and we will also uh, get back and we will unbox the blue number 52. I don't expect much differences in them, but uh, we'll certainly take a look and see uh, what we got on going on on the outside for a livery and what we have going on on the inside of that one. So join us again. If you like this kind of content, don't forget to subscribe, turn on those notifications. You'll find out when the next video is out and uh, comment and uh, share this. Until next time, slot car fans, that's all for now from Hobbit Racing. We'll see you. If you don't subscribe to Cobra Racing, I'll poke you with my staff. Pokey, pokey, pokey. She will poke you with her staff. Pokey!